And welcome to First Look Florida State Football. Tom Block, Keith Jones. It's week number two. Florida State rolls to a convincing victory over Murray State. They get Savannah State tonight. Obviously, Florida State heavy favorite against a team that was disposed of 84 to nothing against Oklahoma State last week, Keith. But uh, before we get into this and look back at Murray State, were it not for the decision of West Virginia, we'd be looking at a pretty good football game tonight. This would be a top 10 matchup. Uh, two teams that uh, had a lot to play for, but uh, as is uh, the, the case, the history as they say, uh, West Virginia chose, once they changed conferences, to cancel the contract. They paid a penalty fee to Florida State. That put the Seminoles in the, in the situation of having to find a replacement game and after, uh, depending on who you talk to, 75, 76, 77 contacts, uh, administration was finally able to get Savannah State to agree to come and play here in Tallahassee. So that's where we're at. Well, and that's, that, that point should not be lost. Florida State tried hard to find uh, an opponent, period. And uh, at the end of the day, there just weren't, uh, I don't even know if there were any other options other than Savannah State. But whatever the case, it'll be Savannah State and Florida State today. And we will talk over the next 30 minutes about that matchup. Also look back at what Florida State did to Murray State. It took a little while to get cranked up, but uh, if you just looked at the final score, you might say that's what you expected. But the, the one thing you certainly didn't expect, you would never hope for, you'd never wish on anybody, is that uh, not only did FSU lose a starter to injury, they lost a key starter, an All-American type, and they lost him for the season. And lost him as a senior. Uh, in other words, there's, there's going to be decisions to be made in this case. We'll develop that more uh, when we get back to you. Yeah, Brandon Jenkins, though, uh, will not be suited up tonight or the rest of the season for Florida State. We'll talk more about Brandon and his replacements coming up. We'll also look ahead to this matchup. We're just getting started, so stay with us here on First Look, Florida State Football. Typical first game, things you always, there's, there's things you're going to like, things you don't like, things you got to work on. It's going to be that way every week, and hopefully we can continue to get better and not make the same mistakes twice. The comments of head coach Jimbo Fisher, Keith, no coach is ever going to come out and say they're entirely pleased with whatever his team did, even if it was a perfect game. But Florida State did not play a perfect game against Murray State. Took them a little while to get cranked up. But general impressions on what you saw from a very lopsided win. A couple of three things. Number one, very few penalties. And, and there were some turnovers, some that, that uh, after replay were given back. Uh, but pretty sound in that regard. Number two, uh, no delay of game. Uh, didn't appear to be 10 people out there or 12 people out there. Those are the things that you fear and look for in first games. And more importantly, uh, the squad, Tom, did what they needed to do. It was a little bit of a slow start, but when everything is said and done, you look at the scoreboard, you look at the statistics, and this is a game that Florida State was supposed to win the way they won it, and they did it. So you put all that together, and I think this is a very, very good start for this uh, Seminole program. Certainly a great starting point for Florida State as they're 1-0 heading into Savannah State's game. Before we talk more about the Tigers, let's take a look back to that 69-3 victory opening day over Murray State for the Seminole. But overall proud. You know, uh, I like the idea that we were penalty, almost penalty free. It's had a few penalties, uh, not very many. It's one of our emphasis we're trying to do. Florida State did exactly what it was supposed to do Saturday night, opening the 2012 season with a blowout 69-3 victory at home over FCS opponent Murray State. Quarterback E.J. Manuel connected on 16 of his 22 pass attempts for 188 yards and one touchdown to help balance out the offense, and Clint Trickett added 117 yards in mop-up duty in the second half. Kenny Shaw grabbed four of the passes for 82 yards and one score, while Kelvin Benjamin and Rashad Green combined for 92 yards receiving. 
FSU's defense also lived up to the billing. Florida State gave up just 156 total yards to the Racers, including just 39 yards rushing. The Seminoles also forced two turnovers. Leading the charge was defensive end Bjorn Werner, who had a breakout sophomore campaign and picked up right where he left off to start his third year. The German-born pass rusher set career highs in tackles for loss with five and sacks with four. Rashad Green officially kicked off the season with his 47-yard punt return after Werner's sack forced an opening drive three and out for the Racers. After Pryor's one-yard touchdown rush gave FSU a 14-0 lead and a second quarter Murray State missed field goal with 8.46 left in the half, Manuel connected with Greg Dent for 28 yards and Green for another 20. One play later, Pryor sprinted around the left side for an 18-yard score. FSU would pad that advantage just prior to the conclusion of the opening half thanks to a speedy scoring drive at the end of the second quarter. It took Manuel just 119 to register long passes to Shaw and Green before evading the rush, running left and finding a diving Shaw for a six-yard touchdown and a 28-3 lead with 29 seconds to go in the first half. Wilder Jr. then opened the second half with a career-long 42-yard run that set up his nine-yard touchdown rush. Werner then stripped Murray State quarterback Casey Brockman on the one-yard line, and the fumble was recovered by Giorgio Newberry, leading to a touchdown score from a leaping Lonnie Pryor. Smiley and Wilder Jr. then combined for three short yardage running scores in the final 11 minutes of the game, including Smiley's one yard dive with 1.51 left on the game clock. As I looked around the locker room before the game, I just saw the, uh, the guys were focused in, so I was really pleased with that, and I uh, thought the execution was really well on both sides. Dustin Hopkins, of course, senior star kicker for Florida State, and uh, he was quite busy uh, last week, figures to be quite busy today. 15 points a week ago, Keith. He's now 53 away from becoming the all-time leading scorer in FSU and ACC history, so that's a mark that he's going to get. But back to his point, focus, and that's what you want to see from a team, uh, especially when you are a heavy favorite against a Murray State. You want to come out and be focused, and Florida State was that. I think Dustin was right on it. In games like this, Florida State against Murray State, the game coming up today against Savannah State, you're really almost like a golfer. You're playing against yourself, i.e. playing against the course. You've got to stay focused. You've got to stay motivated. You've got to play an entire 60 minutes. And if you do, that's the sign of a mature football team. We saw that happen against Murray State. We'll see whether it happens against Savannah State. And, and I think, I think this team is there. I think this team will perform, and it doesn't matter who they're performing against. Well, and obviously Florida State is, uh, you know, no matter what happens tonight, they're going to get a victory against Savannah State. But uh, one thing they don't want to have happen is another player go down with injury. And so the big news that broke early this week, Brandon Jenkins, news came out on Monday night, as a matter of fact, that uh, not only is he not going to play today, he's not going to play this season. This is a guy who's a senior, does have a redshirt option available, but you hate it for him. He was so close to turning pro. And then from a Florida State standpoint, Jimbo's got to start to wonder, you know, if he's not a little bit snake bit after all the injuries a year ago to have a guy like this go down. Well, remember, you got on the inside, you got Jacoby McDaniel, who is scheduled to take a red shirt. Uh, you wanted to red shirt Mario Edwards Jr. and have him get a little more mature, maybe lose a little weight, see whether he's really a defensive tackle, defensive end. You may have to revisit that situation with Brandon being out. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of teams that, uh, and Jimbo referred to him this way after the game on Saturday, he called his top three defensive ends 1A, 1B, and 1C. Well, if Brandon was 1A, he's now gone, but you do have 1B and 1C in Bjorn Werner and Tank Carradine, who, who probably is a, uh, as a combo are about as good as anybody else is gonna have out there anyway. Well, War Warner, the, the lot uh, national player of the week this week for his performance, what, four sacks, five tackles for a loss, Aaron Dean comes in after Brandon goes out. He leads the team in tackles with nine total stops. Uh, so you've got a great pair there, and you've got depth behind them as well. So as a team, you hate losing uh, Jenkins. You, your heart goes out to him, but you've got some replacement bodies. That's, that's a little bit of the luxury Florida State has on their front four. As long as we're talking defense, let's continue that thought, and then we'll get to the offense. Uh, you said a week ago when we sat right here that one thing you should expect from this Florida State defense is more turnovers. We saw a couple of those. Warner got one on the on the fumble strip, and, and Xavier Rhodes got an interception. General impressions uh, 
from your standpoint, Chris Hatcher's in his third year at Murray State. It's the first time his team was held without a touchdown. I, I thought the defense performed well. You go back and look at individual things and you see some kids that, that really excelled. Uh, uh, I really like Joyner's play. I thought Rhodes, although he'd been uh, hampered a little bit in, in preseason, I, he looked fine to me. On the other side, you didn't see big plays with Waysom and, 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 and Darby. Uh, I, I think the defensive unit played well. Now, two turnovers, probably would like to have that three or four, but by the same token, it's the first game of the year. You're still getting things done, still trying it. And the thing I really liked is when the twos and or the threes went in, there was not any let up in uh, effort or execution. You still preserved the, the shutout of the touchdown, only having given up the one field goal. All right, well, and the defense went forced a three and out in the first series. The ensuing punt taken to the house by Rashad Green. Everybody says, problem solved, the punt returner, Greg who? Then a few more punts unfold, and Rashad doesn't get his hands on him in time, lets him bounce. You're a former punt returner, and it, it's the cardinal sin, I, I know, but uh, your impressions having seen him for a full game, and how correctable are his mistakes? Very correctable, very correctable, because he wasn't getting the help he was deserving of. When they have uh, the rugby-style kick, you've got to shut down the gunners because that ball is not going to get up in the air very much and it's going to hit quick. If you've got anybody around you, you can't take a chance of trying to run up there and get the ball or trying to field the ball on the first bounce. So in order for Green to be judged whether he did a great job on the, on the rugby punt, you've got to have your gunners uh, being stopped. And Coach Fisher even alluded to that in his press conference on Monday, that the team has to do a better job of putting Rashad in a chance to field those types of punts. It's, it's unique to the rugby style kick. It certainly was an electric way to start a season though for, for a guy to be back there for the first time basically. He did it last year briefly. And, and you almost saw it coming. It was like it just opened up and there he was. And uh, it couldn't happen to a greater kid. He's a young kid. But you talk about a guy that works his tail off and will perform every chance he gets. Uh, keep your eye on green with an E. All right, offensive conversation coming next. One, one final thought, we'll put a, a, a period at the end of this sentence. But Savannah State tonight, uh, you know, obviously this is a Florida State can do what it wants to do kind of game. So in the situation of punt returner, I mean, how do you handle this? Do you give three or four guys a couple chances? And really across the board, I mean, how do you attack this game tonight? I, I wouldn't, Tom, because it's game number two. I would put Green back there and give him as many reps as your primary punt returner as you can. Now, let, let's say he returns two for a touchdown. Okay, then I bring in number two or number three to help. But you're still trying to position yourself for conference play. You're still trying to position yourself for the rest of your season. I don't think you tweak that or toy with that too much early. All right, sounds good. And we will talk uh, the other side of the ball as promised when we come back. Florida State getting set for game number two under the lights tonight at Doe Campbell Stadium. Well, the second half will be anyway, I guess, right? Six o'clock kick, Florida State and Savannah State. Stay with us as first look Florida State football continues. One, two, three, line. There's things that we saw on film that we could have corrected. We probably left like 100, 150 yards passing out there that we could have had. You know, and we want we want to get that this week. So I've already discussed with my receivers. We need to go out there this week with a with a mission in hand and go out there and execute. It. Game number two on the 2012 season tonight, Florida State and Savannah State. Tom Block, Keith Jones with you. And uh, Keith, we haven't talked a lot about offense yet. General impressions, uh, you know, 60 minutes into the season from what you've seen out of FSU. Uh, slow start. Uh, Jimbo Fisher alluded to that earlier in the week. would like to see the offense get a little better start. Thought the offensive line, recognizing they were going up against uh, kids that they're, they're more physically uh, over, if you will, uh, I thought they performed real well. If you go back and look at some of the clips, like I did, of, of particular plays, you see them picking up people on blitzes and stunts. Uh, Coach Fisher again talked about nobody came three. There was no loss, no offensive play for loss of yardage in the entire ball game by Florida State. The only thing that I saw, Tom, and this is micromanagement, uh, devil's advocate, is I, I, it looked to me like EJ was aiming the ball a little bit more than throwing the ball. Uh, he was on target, but he appeared to be just a half a second late, 
the interception, he was behind, although it wasn't his fault that the ball was picked off. I, I'd like to see EJ a little more demonstrative, uh, a little more, uh, a little bit too much air under the ball. And I think that had to do with him being, the receivers being so wide open, you know, he knew he didn't have to force the ball in there. But that's a, that's a micro criticism. He made all the right decisions at the line of scrimmage, made all the right decisions on his throws, I guess I just want him to be back there and be a little more of a gunslinger. You talk about him maybe not being as crisp as we'd like to see. I, you know, on the sideline, I kind of felt the same way, and then I grabbed the halftime stat sheet, and he was 13 for 17, and he had the drop ball that was picked off, and Nick O'Leary dropped one I thought he should have had, or maybe it was a catch and a fumble. Point being, his numbers were pretty good. One, one of the changes, though, that was made, uh, and I don't know that we knew this was going to happen, matter of fact, we didn't know it was going to happen, is that Coach Damian Craig was no longer in the press box. He was on the sideline uh, communicating with his quarterback. Uh, you know, interesting change there, and your thoughts on it? Uh, an interesting change, one that the, the normal fan wouldn't necessarily pay attention to, but remember all the way back when Coach Fisher came as the offensive coordinator, he was used to spending his time in the booth. He came down on the sidelines, said it didn't make a big deal. Uh, we'd have to ask him, you know, make him pinky swear as to whether it did or didn't. I like, I always like the quarterback coach being on the sidelines. Uh, I was talking to Brandon Streeter who is the offensive coordinator for Richmond in the game I had last week against Virginia. He says he likes to look his quarterbacks in the eye. Fedora at North Carolina will say the same thing. Like to look and see how that quarterback's looking and reacting in the eye as opposed to through the headset. I think it's a good move. Uh, I think Damian's good anywhere he's at, but if he can be down there and, and see some things or calm some things down when needed, even more so. Well, it allows Damian to pay attention to the micro level with EJ, but from a bigger picture, allows Jimbo to focus on the macro level of, of game management, that sort of thing, and that, that's what he talked about this week. All right, the guys that nobody ever talks about, but we've spent a lot of time talking about them this last year is the offensive line. You already mentioned this, 275, 285 yards gained rushing, zero yards lost rushing. There was not a negative yard, yardage play last week. Now, you can say FSU had Murray State out, man, but if you look back a year ago, against inferior competition. There were sacks. There were a lot of negative yardage plays. So to start here, your general thoughts on the on the OL. Well, it, it all begins with them knowing what to do and being comfortable with each other. And again, you didn't see anybody running free. You didn't see anybody unblocked. Those are two key things when I look at the offensive line play. Whether they can execute the block is one thing, but if they don't make the correct block, you can't execute the block. It appeared to me no busted assignments of significance. They were communicating. Uh, remember, Melanie went down, so you had to bring in uh, another kid that hadn't played much. Uh, they got some rotation in in the third and fourth quarter, and you didn't see much of a drop off. Not about to tell you that this is the best offensive line in the country, but I really, really like the progress they're making, and I think they have a tremendous upside. Yeah, and we certainly saw that. Uh, good starting point for week one. Week two coming up tonight against Savannah State. One thing that uh, we've harped on already is that uh, we were going to see the uh, a new Lonnie Pryor who really would be the old Lonnie Pryor, the one who's 8 or 10 or 12 pounds lighter that we saw in 2010. Uh, it didn't take long. He matched his touchdown total from a year ago in one game with three scores. I mean, his, his difference is noticeable. Maybe not when you just look at it, but his first step, uh, the one run he had around the corner, uh, it wasn't even close. Uh, he made every block. Uh, he's, he's back to the old form. If he stays healthy, and we, you and I have talked about this over the summer, he's the kid that could have an absolutely phenomenal final campaign and really, really do some things for this Florida State squad. All right, Savannah State, Florida State tonight. We'll have some final thoughts when we come back, so stay with us here on First Look, Florida State Football. State 1-0, Savannah State tonight at 6 o'clock. The Noles actually up in the polls. Uh, 
you know, you, all this discussion about the caliber of competition you play, but lo and behold, you put up a lopsided number on the scoreboard, and it shows up in the polls as FSU moves up one Pre spot. Preseason is a beauty contest, Tommy. Yeah. It's a beauty contest. Did you look good doing it? Well, the, the conference and, and the, the regular season, if you will, the real season starts next week when Wake Forest comes to town at 12 noon, and you can say what you want, but Wake Forest won the game last year and has been a, a thorn in Florida State's side. So the ACC opener comes a, a week from today, and then the big game everybody has circled against Clemson, uh, perhaps under the lights at Doe Campbell Stadium in two weeks. But, but as to Savannah State, I mean, what, how does Florida State treat this game tonight? Well, you, you treat it uh, almost like a scrimmage, and I don't want to be disrespectful to, to Savannah State. And, and again, Coach, uh, excuse me, EJ talked about it during the week. You don't want to embarrass anybody, but you've got to go out there and play ball. How long do you leave your starters in will probably depend on how quickly the score ramps up. Uh, how long do you play particular people because you want to see more tape on them in live situations will be dictated by segment. That's all based on Florida State doing what we hope and expect them to do, and that's to go out and control the ball game from the first kick, just like they get a, did against Murray State, so that you put yourself in an opportunity to let some more kids play. Uh, Savannah State will not be unaccustomed to that. I think Oklahoma State had 94 kids play uh, against them last week. We may see just as many this week if things go as they should. In terms of showing your hand, that's always an interesting dilemma or debate. Uh, you know, do you show nothing so the upcoming opponents haven't seen anything, or do you show everything so they got to spend all week working on more? Obviously, in a game like tonight, I wouldn't expect to see much. I, I, I think you show whatever you need to work on. But if you've got particular things, particularly for uh, Wake and for Clemson, uh, I don't think you broadcast them uh, to the country uh, in a game against uh, uh, Savannah State. You kind of hold those. But there are some things. Uh, look for a few reverses. Uh, don't be surprised if you see uh, uh, some misdirection. I think there's some continuing things that Florida State wants to add on the offensive side that uh, we'll see this evening. Hopefully what we see is uh, more positive production with no negative yardage plays like we did a week ago and continued dominance on the defensive side. KJ, it's fun as always. Like a goose egg. I'd like a goose egg, Mark. A goose egg. All right. We'll pass that on to Coach Stoops for you. And uh, we will join you again next week. Enjoy the game tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll have the recap for you. And we'll also look ahead to the conference opener against Wake Forest next week. Thanks for joining us on First Look Florida State Football.